Up to this point, most of us know exactly what diabetic ketoacidosis is. And I think in one of the sessions we addressed issues to do with the causes of diabetic ketoacidosis. And of course, we talked about a lack of insulin being um, the main cause of diabetic ketoacidosis. So today, I want us to focus mainly on uh, the management of uh, uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, <clears throat> before we look at uh, management, just a bit of uh, a recap of how we got here. Uh, someone has DKA. How exactly did we get there? So this is where we use the principles of biochemistry, outlining uh, metabolic pathways that could actually lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. And one of the key pathways that um, has to be mentioned is beta oxidation, because from beta oxidation we generate acetyl CoA, which in the hepatic cells uh, is used in a process known as ketogenesis, thereby generating ketone bodies, which of course, if produced in excess, will lead to DKA. So you have to understand how we get to DKA from mere metabolic pathways. Now, the management of DKA has quite a lot of uh, options, and today I've just selected three, uh, which I really, really would love to see when someone is answering a question on uh, management of uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Fluid therapy, potassium balance, uh, insulin therapy. Now, all of these are trying to address different aspects. And you may ask a question, does it matter what I start with? Can I start with insulin therapy before fluid therapy, before checking uh, the concentration or levels of potassium? Well, I think it does matter. It really does matter. And this is why. So usually, um, for people with DKA, one of the issues we are trying to address when managing DKA is hyperglycemia. Now, what does hyperglycemia really, really do to the human body? So hyperglycemia leads to osmotic diuresis. And because of this osmotic diuresis, we're going to have things like volume depletion, free water depletion, and hypokalemia. Now, this is our major concern in this instance because uh, the concentration of potassium, if not checked, could lead to quite a lot of uh, disastrous uh, situations. Now, this osmotic diuresis leads to massive fluid loss, and that is why we have fluid therapy first, so that we can control, we can try to replace the fluids that have been lost. Now, the fluid loss uh, goes with um, loss of ions, such as potassium ions, leading to um, hypokalemia. Now, there's something that I want us to see here. Um, before insulin therapy, you need to ensure that potassium levels are above 3.3 milli equivalents per liter. Now, this is very, very serious because it, it simply now tells us that when you are managing DKA, even if insulin therapy is important, you need to check a few things before you can initiate insulin therapy. Otherwise, you're going to have more complications. Why do we need to ensure that potassium levels are above 3.3 milli equivalents per liter. So I'll give you a second to just think through that. Now, one quick reason is that insulin actually draws potassium ions back into the cell. So if potassium levels are below 3.3 milli equivalents per liter, and then you administer insulin without checking the concentration of uh, uh, potassium, you are likely to have uh, serious complications because you are going to exaggerate uh, the hypokalemia leading to uh, serious medical conditions. So basically, this is um, a bit about management on DKA. In case you have any questions, please 
you can still ask and then they'll be answered in the next session. Thank you very much for watching.